I want you to look over at your neighbor and we're going to ask him a question and uh, I want you to really size them up and ask him this question. Have you been working out? Huh? You've been working out? For real? And your answer to that is, right? Right there, right? Yeah. How many of y'all know we can be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might? Amen. And we should be. We should be. And so today, we started a new series last week called Real. Everybody say, that's real? How many of y'all know we have real problems? We're real people. We need a real God with real answers. Anybody say amen? Amen. True, true. And so as we go into that, here's one thing I might say to you. If you wasn't here or if you failed to get a shirt last week, one of the things, Convoy donated these shirts to us. And then Miss Dee Dee had them printed up. And so if you didn't get a shirt or wasn't here last week to get a shirt, there's some out on the porch. And so after service is uh, dismissed, go get you one. There should be some different sizes out there. Somebody be out there to assist you. Everybody say, that's real. All right. So we're talking about restoration to begin with. How many of y'all know that God is a restorer? Right? He's a restorer. And so when you look at that, last week when we taught on this, we taught about two different categories. When he restores us in relationship, when he restores us in relationship, it's not to take us back to that sinful fallen man that we start out as, but it's to take us way back beyond that to Adam, and it is a sinless and righteous relationship. And the second Adam, everybody say Jesus. The second Adam, Jesus, is the one that restores us into a sinless or righteous relationship. And so that happens through repentance and being reborn. And then the second category of restoration is even when you start walking with the Lord, you've been born again, you've repented, you've living your life the way you should. At that same point, at that same time, how many of y'all ever go through some low spots? Anybody ever had the devil steal anything from you? Right? Restoring to me the joy is what the psalmist prayed, right? And so there's a whole list of things that God is a restoring God. So that's what the R is. This real is an acronym for restoring and empowering. Everybody say empowering abundant life. That's what he's into. He came that we might have life. And have it abundantly. Isn't that true? That's what John 10.10 says, right? And so I want what my father and my big brother Jesus paid for. It's it's your inheritance. It's ours. And so why would we let the devil steal any of that from us? And so um, Jesus' words, I'm come. This was the mission. This is what he's all about. I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Today, the first thing that we're going to talk about, and Pastor Scott's already introduced the thought, the concept, um, is potential. How many of y'all know that we all have potential, right? So this is the old cliche I heard years and years ago. It's a good line. I want you to hear this. God's gift to you is your potential. What you do with that potential is your gift back to God. Amen? Amen. What are you doing with your potential? See, for us to realize what... How many of y'all believe Jeremiah 29, 11? I know the plans that I have for you, right? Anybody think God has a plan for your life? Anybody? Huh? I do too. I believe he has a plan for your life. I believe he has a plan for my life. And the, the best life I'll ever live is walking in the plan, realizing the plan of God for my life. To do that, I'll have to realize the potential that God's put in me. You'll have to realize the potential, and not just to realize it, but to realize it in the context of learning how to walk in that. You will have to be empowered. Everybody say empowered. Empowered. You'll have to be empowered to realize the potential and the plan of God for your life. Fortunately for us, God gives us this massive list of things that empower us. And so we could talk about a bunch of them today. Here would be some of the list. I can't cover them all. Uh, If you help me, I might cover them all, but I won't. There's about a hundred here. I'm going to give you five or six of them right here. How many of y'all know that the power of praise? You put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Wasn't praise good? Well, ago, just, just, huh? And so when you put that on, it's an empowering thing. And you can do that for yourself, wherever you're at. Anytime you so desire, you can just begin to start praising God. Anybody give thanks to God this week? 
got some blessings in your life to be thankful for. Those are empowering things. Hell can't steal that from you. Sure, you've got things where those low spots are, those giants that come along, those hills that are mountains that you got to climb sometime. But how many all know God is bigger? He is just bigger than. And so it doesn't change God's plan for you. Oh, you have no idea how big that giant was. You have no idea how hard he's going to throw that rock at his head. Right? Yeah, baby! Potential! The... <laughs> It's potentially the power that leaves this house today could be devastating to the kingdom of darkness. Anybody say amen? amen. The potential when that light shines and that light shines and that light shines. And when you get salty and when you get salty and, and the list. Hell could be in for a really bad week. Don't that sound good? Yeah, it does. Yeah. See, that's... And, and so... Uh, I brought, I, I, we're going to talk about potential. I, I, I brought my quiver today, and, and this is taken from Psalm 127. We're not doing five baby dedications today, just so you know. We usually do a baby dedication with Arrow. You'll have to come see sometime. Psalm 127, verse 4 says this, As arrows are, so are children. Anybody a child of God here? These arrows are a representation. When that psalm was written, Psalm 127, arrows were for two basic things, for provision and for protection. Provision and for protection. And so God, listen, part of the potential that is in your life is that you are a weapon in the hands of God. That's who you are. You're a weapon. But to realize that, you have to have enough power to be able to fly. Look at here. We'll pull this one out. That one right there has got one of those big old nasty tips on it that expands. When that one hits, it's designed, and I'm not going to take it out, but that is designed to expand. It's an expandable. Look over at your neighbor and tell him he's talking about you now. How many of y'all know we're expandable? Not expendable, expandable. Don't be talking about the waistline, Laney boy. You stay out of that one right there now. We could go there, though, but we'll leave it alone. How many of y'all know we can grow? See, in, in potential, here's what happens in potential. As God begins to expand, it's line upon line, expand. It's precept upon precept, right? It's faith to faith. I mean, I know that's an expansion. That's God's expansion plan for our growth so that we can realize we can walk in His plan and His potential for our life. I'm not who I was or who I'm going to be. Anybody here arrived yet? Look over your name and tell them you're just expandable. Huh? Listen. Listen to me. This should be empowering to you. The devil can't get any bigger, but you can. Huh? The mountain can't get any taller, but you can. The valley can't get any lower, and you won't. You about jumped in on that one, didn't you? All right. As arrows are. I'm an arrow in God's hands. How about you? God spoke those words to me a long time ago, and I, I love to share it. Here's where I want us to go. Open in your Bibles. Uh, first off, right here. To, um, we're going to go to Luke chapter 24, verse 49. We're going to talk about potential for just a little bit. And we're going to talk about empowerment. Some of those things that empower us. Some of those things that we can walk in. Some of those things that we need to walk in. How many of y'all know that unity, there is power. Unity. When, when I know that I can walk with my brothers and my sisters in unity. The body of Christ, when this hand is working in coordination with this hand and with the eye, right? Good things happen when we walk in unity. It is an empowering thing. It's an empowering thing when at home, I don't know where Marsha went to, but she, she's usually right here. It's an empowering thing when, I hope the rapture didn't occur. I'm sure she's going, I'm a little concerned about me sometimes. It's an empowering thing when one puts a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand. You got it. When Marsh and I are walking together in unity, 
It's an empowering thing, isn't it? It's an empowering thing when you're walking with your spouse where you need to be walking. What God, because his plan for you and his plan for your spouse are absolutely designed to intersect and walk this thing out together. You can encourage one another. When one's down, the other one can lift up. Any encouragers in the house? Any of the Barnabas crowd in here? Barnabas, right? The Apostle Paul has this guy that walked with him named Barnabas, right? And Barnabas, literally his name means the son of encouragement. Anybody know an encourager? It's one of those people that when you are down, when you're having a tough day, when you've hit the bottom, you're looking for that person because every time you get in their presence, they'll build you up. They'll give you a good word. They'll talk about all you are and all you can be and not what you failed on. Huh? They're not going to ignore that. They're not going to push it under the rug, but it's just not. Listen, the blessing and the power of God, what he has for you is in front, not behind. You've already been back there. What's in front of you is greater than what's behind you. It's the plan of God. It's your potential to walk in that. You were there, you are here, and you're going there. That's encouraging to me. That's empowering when I know that God has a plan for my life and that I can walk in that. He hasn't made it so high, so distant that I can't reach it. He put it just right. Now let me say this. In that context... What I know about the strongest Christians, what I know about the strongest Christians is God is always stretching them. Anybody say amen? amen. He'll stretch them in the Word, and they'll, get, they'll grow in the Word. He'll stretch them in faith. huh? From faith to faith, glory to glory, like the brother was talking about, right? Faith to faith. He'll stretch you in faith. And... Now listen to me. The faith that it's taken to get you here today, to where you're at in your life today, I think it will require more faith because you always get tested at that level of faith that you're at. He tests you. When you pass that, then he'll take you on up to the next level of faith. The faith that it took to walk here is just a building block to take you to a greater faith to walk tomorrow. Anybody want to be empowered with more faith? We're going to talk about the empowerment of the word, the empowerment of faith, the empowerment of love, and the empowerment of freedom are the four we're going to talk about. I want to share these just real quickly. The power of wisdom, and wisdom an empowering thing. Peace is an empowering thing. Joy is an empowering thing. And just being in the presence of God is an empowering thing. Amen? Amen. Here's what we're going to minister to when we come to the end of this message. Um... Some of you don't feel empowered today. Some of you, for whatever the reason may be, you may be looking at your circumstance. You may be looking at who you are or who you don't think you are, or, and you just feel weak. Some of you have been getting pounded. It's like you, 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 see, you see those old battering rams against this door, against this wall. And some of you have been in the battle and you just feel like I've been getting battered and I've been getting battered and I've been getting battered and the door's weakening. And the braces and the reinforcements are weakening. And some of you feel like you're in that weakening condition. I've got good news for you. There's an empower in the house today. There's an empower in the house today. Some of you have made some bad choices and it's stolen from you and it has weakened you in your walk with God. But the good news is, is you can turn around. You can make amends on that. You can repent and the restore and the empower will go to work on you and you can be re-empowered. How many of y'all know that when the, whenever, when we'll read this in a little bit, it talks about being filled with the Spirit That word in the Greek means a continual filling in the Spirit. When we look at the empowerment of the Spirit, um, when you go to the gas station, one fill-up won't do you for life, will it? You'll have to continually be being filled. And so when he says, 
Be filled with the Spirit. It means get in God's presence, get filled today. Get in God's presence and get filled again. And however often, however, you're right, it depends on how much you're turning and burning for Jesus. That's just exactly what it amounts to. And you keep being refilled. Anybody need to be empowered today? Anybody want more empowerment today? That's, you're in a good place because the one who gives is here. That's where we're at today. So, let's talk a little more about potential. Uh, Luke 24, 49. And behold, I send the promise of my father. Everybody say, he promised. He promised. His promises are empowering when you know that he's got you covered. I send the promise of my father upon you. Tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued. Everybody say endued with power from on high. That word endued literally means to be completely wrapped up in and totally clothed in the power of God. We try to do so much of this stuff on our own. And you do have a part to do in this. Amen? You've got a part. If you can believe. Right? All things are... Everybody say if. We'll get there. You have a part to play. But he has the bigger part. That's where the power... What really happens is, is when you bring yourself in alignment so the power of God can flow into your life. It flows in. so It flows to so it can flow through. And you become a conduit. Not only, not only does God, listen, not only does God want to empower you, but he wants you to be able to empower others. Hmm? He gives to you so he can give through you. So not only are we going to minister to weakness, but we're going to minister to insecurity. Some of you are dealing with some insecurities today. And listen, only secure people give power away. Insecure people protect power. In the areas of leadership, in the areas of leadership, if a leader cannot delegate and give other people power and authority to work in, that leader can never accomplish more than what he can cover on his own. But if you can have faith in God in people, huh? Have faith in God. I mean, right? Mark eleven twenty two, right? Have faith in God. Everybody say, have faith in God. So where does he live? If we're going to have faith in God, then we know he's omnipresent. He's in heaven. He's all around. But he lives in us. We're the house. We're the temple he lives in. Listen to me. I don't always get it right, but I have faith in God in me. And I've had him correct my compass reading more than once. How about you? Then I learned from that, and that's an empowering thing, to have faith in God in others. And so as I turn loose of different things, and God says, so, so your brother Luke was sitting right here with Amber just a little bit ago, and I have faith in God in Luke. Amen. I couldn't have said that two years ago. <laughs> Some of you know Luke's story. But God, that's what Pastor was talking about earlier, right? But God. And God is doing the work. And so now I'm saying, okay, this is what we need. This was Tomorrow night, if you want to have a wonderful experience, come to Misfits tomorrow night, 6 o'clock right here. We'll feed you. We'll treat you so many ways you'll like one of them. <laughs> That's Southern hospitality. If you're not from around here, you're watching online or if you're visiting or whatever, welcome, by the way. We're glad you're here. And, and Misfits group tomorrow night. And it's just a bunch of broken people who have been empowered by God and living the life that God has planned and discovering what that plan is. Isn't it a beautiful thing what God does, huh? That happens on Monday nights right here. Luke and Amber and Lynn and Lane and a bunch of the rest of them. Luke, Lynn, Lane. Your mom and dad had some kind of an L thing going on. I, I like that myself too, the DL. So anyway, I have faith. Not because he has such a proven track record. But I know who God is in him, Rick. And that makes a whole lot of difference. That don't mean, now listen to me, that don't mean he's not going to make mistakes. I don't know anybody that's perfect, do you? Look over at your neighbor and tell him he's talking to you right now. I know he is, huh? Right? But what I have faith in God in you and in me and in others 
is that God knows how to correct the compass and get us back on track. You have faith in that? Then you can empower other people. You can empower other people and say, let me encourage you. How many of y'all know encouragers are empowerers? Huh? Let me encourage you to do what God's called you to do because you can. You can. Let me encourage you. I believe in you. Isn't it something powerful happen when somebody believes in you? Hmm? God believes in you, so he put his spirit in you. He put his word in you. He put his gifts in you. He put a calling on your life, and he hadn't regretted it. <laughs> Won't you just live it out? Why don't you just walk it out? Let's get more empowered today to be clothed with power from on high. Jeremiah 29, 11, we've already talked about. Let, let me share this Jeremiah 29, 11 out of the New English Translation. For I know what I have planned for you, says the Lord. I have plans to prosper you. I mean, all know that sounds like the abundant life, right? Restoring and empowering abundant life. Everybody say, that's real. That's real, restoring. All right. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. I have plans to give you a future. How many of y'all know? Potential, right? I have plans to give you a future. And it's not just in heaven. It is for tomorrow should you get to be on this earth. Heaven's going to be a great plan for the future, right? It is a great plan. But I, I may have a tomorrow here. And if I have that tomorrow here, he's got a plan. And I'll need to be empowered to walk it out. To realize that potential. I have plans to give you a future, listen to this, filled with hope. A confident expectation. John 1.12. I love this verse. John 1.12. Uh, the power to become. But as many as received him. Has anybody here received Jesus Christ into your life? Then this is yours. This is yours. To as many as received him. To them. Everybody say, that's me. Gave he power to become. Everybody say power to become. I am not who I was. I have gotten to this stage in my walk with God, in my, the, the, the plan of God for my life, and I have power to finish this on out. I have a future filled with hope, and I have the power to become what it's going to take to walk in that. Is that encouraging, empowering to anyone? It's yours. If you've received Jesus, that's yours. Even to them that believe on his name. Any believers in the house? Huh? Any believers in the house? Anybody believe? Yeah. If you're a believer, if you're watching and you're a believer, this is for you to become the sons of God, even to them that believe. Now listen, here's something empowering. How many of y'all know when you have the right to use his name? Even to them that believe on his name. It is the name of Jesus, the name that is above all other names, the name by which every tongue will confess, every knee will bow. There is no other name higher. And he said, you just do it in my name. That's kind of empowering. A lot of the time when we end our prayers, bless God. Let me get holy here for a moment. Bless God. A lot, a lot, a lot. That's my wish list, God, in Jesus' name. And it's almost as if we're just putting the tagline. Sincerely, P.S., D.L., Hope All's Well, blah, 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 right? Everybody say the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Take just a second. Jesus, Jesus. Think about that name. When that name's uttered, the angels of heaven come to attention. Hmm? When that name is uttered, I think they stand and they're looking down and saying, what do you need? Because that name is precious. And that name is powerful. And that name has great respect even in the corridors of hell itself. Amen. Don't you throw that name out like it's just... Some, that name is powerful. And you've been given the authority. In my name shall you, right? Read you some Mark chapter 16, start at verse 15, right? That great commission. Power to become. 
How many of y'all are glad you're on the becoming side of this thing? You're still moving into, you're still finding that potential. Let's look at this one. We've talked it. Mark 9, 23. Mark 9, 23. Jesus said unto him. Now I have to, I, I need to preface the story just a little bit. There is a man, the him is a man, it's a dad that has come to seek Jesus on behalf of his son who is dealing with demons. The demons attack and he falls down and he wallows around and he's foaming at the mouth. Love is one of those empowering things when you truly care about someone. How many of y'all know love will take you a long way down the road to do whatever it takes? Yeah. Love is an empowering thing. Do you know that you're loved by God? And He'll do whatever it takes to get to you. If it requires to hang on a cross, then I'd rather die than live without you is in essence what Jesus said, not with words, but with His actions. And so he did. He did. And so this father has come to Jesus. Now listen to me. He's dealt with something here that he can't solve, he can't fix. Now listen to me. There are some things in this life that only the power of God can fix. This is one of them. This is a supernatural manifestation of demonic forces that's in this. And listen, it's a child's life. And don't think for a minute that hell cares about a child. God loves everyone. Satan hates everyone. He is no respecter of persons either. He hates you. He hates children. He, don't make, he has no goodness, no light whatsoever in him. He is a liar and the father of lies. He is darkness. Right? This father has run into something that he can't fix. And so he comes to Jesus for help. And this is Jesus' response to him. If you can believe, everybody say if. Yeah. Jesus knows he's got the power. But there are some things that we have to stand on for ourselves. Everybody say if. Yeah. So... Before I move on beyond that word, there are a lot of different ifs in Scripture if you do what I ask you to do. Anybody say obedience, right? If you dwell in me and my words dwell in you, if. If you walk in my covenant, if you walk in my truth, if you walk in my commandments, if you can believe. Listen to how the door opens up. Everybody say all things. Ooh, that is empowering. Even the things that go beyond my ability. Even the things that I don't fully understand in the spirit world. Even the demons, they yield to the name of Jesus. They yield to the power of God. They don't yield to my power. They yield to the Jesus in you and to the Jesus that's in me. Amen. Amen. Darkness can do nothing but yield when light is switched on. It can do nothing but yield. It has to flee from light. That should be empowering to us. All things are possible to him who believes. I love the response. This is so real. The response of this father. And these are the words that he says. Basically, in essence, he says, I believe, but help my unbelief. Everybody say power to become we got to grow. Is that fair? Is that real? I haven't arrived in neither of you. But there's room to grow. And God's got us on that path that if we will walk it and we'll continue to walk in his plan, we can realize that potential and it's the power to become. And if you believe... The things that are impossible with men, right? If you go on to Luke chapter or to Mark chapter 10, it says these things that are impossible with men... They are possible with God. 
That means if God's living in you, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Then all things are possible to those who believe. And you just let God do what you can't do if you can't do it. But if you need to do it, you take care of your business. Take care of your business. Anybody say amen? Amen. It's the power to become that potential, that empowerment that is in us. And we grow and we grow and we've not arrived yet. John 6, 63. We're going to talk about the word. The power of the word. The power of the word. The word of God teaches us who God is. And when we know who God is, made in his image, we can know more about who we are. And if we know more about who we are, we can know more about our purpose and his will for us. All within the Word of God. The Word of God. You'll know the truth. This is John 8, 32. You'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. John 6, 63 says, The flesh profits nothing. We put so much emphasis into this flesh, but it's going back to dust someday. The flesh profits nothing. Right? Right? It is the Spirit that quickens. It's the Spirit that makes us alive. It's the Spirit that is leading us to become. The words that I speak, everybody say His Word. His words are Spirit and they are life. And so when you're dealing with your situation, when you're dealing with that giant, when you're dealing with that mountain, when you're dealing with that whatever, are you speaking words of life? Because if you're speaking God's word, listen to me, death and life, Pastor Scott talked about this earlier during worship, death and life are in the power of the tongue. But a lot of the time we find ourselves agreeing with the wrong side. Well, I just don't know. It just seems like it always happens. If it's going to happen to anybody, it's going to happen to me. Murphy's Law has come on in on this whole deal right here. You know, if it, if it could happen to anybody, it's just going to be bad. It's always glass half empty. Matter of fact, don't even have a glass anymore. Bless your heart. We'll get you a glass. And it won't even be half full. How many all know he fills it up and flows over? Isn't that a good thing? Huh? That's his plan. The words that I speak, they're spirit. There is nowhere that the spirit cannot go. Everybody say omnipresent. That means he is everywhere at the same time through the power of his spirit. You're praying for someone 10,000 miles away. He's as close there as he is right here. Amen. There's no distance and there's no time that separates us from God, from his word, from his power. The words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And when they land, right, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, right? Shall not return unto me void, but it'll accomplish that which I've sent it to do and prosper in the thing whereunto I've sent it. That's Isaiah 55. Amen. That's what it says. Okay. I want to go back to the story just for a minute about the little boy. The only thing we know about that little boy is that Jesus, Jesus set him free. Dad was honest. I believe. Can you help my unbelief? Anybody struggle sometimes? It just seems so much bigger than me, God. But I believe in you. I have faith in you. Because with you, there's nothing impossible. I wonder what happened with that little boy. I wonder what his testimony was. I wonder if, I wonder if he walked it out. I wonder if somewhere down the road... That he's walking this plan of God out for his life and he starts to share this testimony. And Shelby, he's sees wanting to empower someone else. So he took his story. How many on your testimony, your story is an empowering thing. And he said, man, I've gone through the trials and I've gone through the tests. But he starts and says, listen, I know that you're dealing with something that's even bigger than you are. But let me tell you where I started. My daddy took me to this guy named Jesus. And I was in such a mess. I would have fits and wallow and foaming at the mouth like I was, I was rabid or something. And it just, 
but Jesus. Everybody say, but Jesus. Hmm? I wonder if he did. I wonder if he realized his potential. I don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us. Wouldn't it be neat to get there? Maybe find out the rest of that story sometime. Wouldn't that be? A, I don't know. That didn't cost you anything. That was free. All right. So um, I want to look at this power of the word. When you know who God is, you can know who you are. You'll know God's will and purpose for your life. You'll know truth and truth sets you free. Faith comes by hearing. Everybody say faith comes. Familiar passage of scripture. Mark eleven twenty two says, have faith in God. Faith is an empowering thing. And faith comes. When I, have, when I have faith in God, and I can have faith in others like we've already talked about, faith through the tests and the trials, faith over the fear, faith over the weakness, faith over the insecurities. Galatians 5 6. Faith doesn't work alone. Faith has to have something that powers it. And we touched on it a while ago. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision. He's talking about the law and the legalisms of the Mosaic law. But here's what really matters. But faith, which works by love. Everybody say, faith works by love. I have faith that God hears me when I pray because I know He loves me. Love keeps the communication channels open, doesn't it? Right? Read, read, read 1 Corinthians 13, the first eight verses of 1 Corinthians 13, right? And it talks about how that love does this and love does that and love doesn't do this and love doesn't do that. And it talks about the conduct of love and how that love, it's the giving kind of love. As a matter of fact, in the old King James, the word is used charity, which is a giving love. And then it comes to verse 8 and it says this, love never fails. Love, what a guarantee. Is that empowering or what? Listen, now, here, here's where we... T- when, when we as a body of believers have love one for another, what's the two big commandments? Love God with all, right? Love your neighbor as yourself. And if we can walk in that love, love is such an empowering thing in the body of believers, it changes everything. Love and faith works by love. Let me tell you what happens when a church really gets into unity and really gets into love with, with, with God and with one another. There is no limit to what we can do, what we can achieve, if we don't care who gets the credit and God gets all the glory. That's a truth, gang. When you're in a church and it's somebody going to do this and give this and give this, I can't talk about it right now, but I just had an individual come up at the end of first service and said, back in the summer, I was at a concert. God laid this on my heart. And the gift that they're getting ready to make to the church and some others, I'll get to talk about it in, in, in time to come. It, it was, I felt pretty empowered when I got here this morning. I just had about a 10-minute meeting in my office back there. And you talk about feeling empowered because I've been praying this prayer. God, you've laid this on my heart. I need to do this and this and this. But you, you haven't released me to share that. How many of y'all know God knows? And, and love. Faith works by love. And this guy came and told me, the very thing that I've been praying about since back in the summer. And he said, God laid this on my heart back in the summer, but it's getting ready to happen. And I just wanted you to know about it. It's like Christmas. I would, I'm the worst Christmas gift hider you've ever seen. And I always want to know. I have tricked my kids when they were little. They're harder now. They're big. I tricked my kids so many times. So uh, one year I said, listen, I... I know, boy, I got in trouble for this one too, Lane. 
I, I know your mama wants me to wear those new clothes that she bought me for Christmas. Where are they at? They just took me like little ducks, marched me right into the back. Am I telling the truth, sis? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being obedient to your dad. Just marched me right in there and got me my new clothes before Christmas. <laughs> it was fun till it wasn't. <laughs> I wish I could tell you. I just want to tell you that when people love one another in a church... And this individual don't want their name known. But they have done something really significant. Not just for the church. But to empower us. To do something for someone else. It's a beautiful thing. And I wish I could tell you. But I will. Not yet. Not yet. I've got to. Maybe next week I can. I'll see. Won't be Christmas quite yet. Faith works by love. Um, Ephesians 5.18. Ephesians 5.18. We're going to talk about the, the power of the Spirit, being empowered by the Spirit. I love this verse. I love to teach on this verse. Be not drunk with wine. Paul, Paul writing, and so he's trying to bring a visual parallel. Be not drunk with wine, where is excess? But be filled with the Spirit. And so what happens, this is what I've heard at least... When someone is intoxicated, it changes their nature. Huh? And so he says, don't do that. But we could say, but let your nature be changed by being intoxicated with the presence of God, with his spirit living in you. I mean, I all know the devil's always trying to counterfeit the real thing, right? It's not the real thing. And so don't be intoxicated with wine, this natural drink that will change your nature, but be intoxicated, be filled with the Spirit. So when we're filled with the Word and we're filled with faith and that faith works by love and we're filled with love, how many all good things are getting ready to happen when that kind of feeling starts happening in the church, in me? It, it needs to happen in me and it needs to happen in you. And when it starts happening all the way across the board, really good things happen at that place. Mm. But be filled with the Spirit. Two basic changes of nature there. Anybody ever been around a happy drunk? <laughs> Woo! -hoo! Woo! -hoo -hoo! Yeah. It don't matter what's going on out there. I've heard this. How many of y'all know we need to be filled with joy? The joy of the Lord's our strength. And the change of nature. That we can have because of the nature of the divine one that's living in us. It changes us. And that's where we can, when our faith starts getting tested and put on trial, we can count it all joy. Because I've got something that's in me that's greater than whatever's going on out there. And he can't rob my peace. And he can't rob my smile. And he can't rob my joy. I'm just going to go ahead and be happy. Not because everything's good. He didn't say it was all joyful. He said, count it all joy. Because what I know about counting it joy is if I'll keep walking out the things for God, all things work together for good. Right here where I'm at right now may be pretty tough. But if I'll just let God work it out. And you say, we well, have no idea how hard it's been, what I've been through. I, I don't. But I do have an idea of how good your God is. How big he is. And I ain't got all that figured out. I'll be, he's bigger. Just when I think I've, I'm starting to get it, then he just blows my mind again. Extraordinarily good God. Amen. Then there's this other drunk. And he weighs 110 pounds soaking wet, and he can whip Hulk Hogan any day of the week. Right? I think... David, the little shepherd boy, had an idea of the power of the Spirit of God when he went up against Goliath. He said, I'm not coming to you in my own power, in my own strength, but I'm coming, everybody, in the name of the Lord of hosts. 
He knew how to use that. He knew about weapons. He knew about bows and he knew about arrows. The beauty about arrows, and we'll go back to that. The beauty about, there it is back here. The beauty of these arrows, not only are they expandable, but when they, the, the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts, when he, when he manifests in the book of Acts, it said the sound of a rushing mighty wind. The wind, the rosh or the pneuma, depending on Hebrew or, or Greek. And what happens, this arrow is designed to catch the wind. And it goes through the air, just like this. And it will hold true, and it will hit the mark. It will hit where it's aimed at, but it has no power to fly on its own. There has to be, listen to me, there has to be a transfer of power. And how that happens, it is the power that's stored in the strong man, the mighty man's arms. And as that bow is pulled back, that power is transferred from his limbs to the limbs of the bow. And when that string that this is attached to, everybody say, you got to be connected. You got to be plugged in, just like what Pastor Scott was talking about. Any example you want to look at, you'll have to be plugged in. You'll have to be connected. You got to be hooked up, however you want to look at it. And the power from God, the mighty man, to us, his children, as arrows are in the hands of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. That's what it says in Psalm 127, verse 4. And so God, the mighty man, wants to transfer his power into your life. And so he does it through the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of his word, the power of faith, and the power of love the power of praise the power and we could go on and on he transfers that and what happens is at some point he releases and just as an arrow is released you're about to be released out here and you have the power to fly in the spirit of God and God has a plan for your life and God has a mark for you to hit and then when, he, when you hit that one, he'll say, now I've got another mission for you. And I'm going to let you fly again. Look over at your neighbor and tell him, let's keep flying high. huh? Woo, let's keep flying high. All right, somebody come and let's, uh, let's get something going up here music-wise. And we're going to pray and we're going to minister to these things. Don't be drunk with wine, where's excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. That's the power of praise, gang. Put on the garment of praise. It's an empowering thing. The power of freedom is the last one. Mm. The power of freedom. So when you're living daily in the Spirit, and you're walking in the Spirit, and you're being led by the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is growing. You're beginning to understand the gifts of the Spirit in your life. And all of those are tons of sermons. You've been set free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You're free to fly. You're free to fly. I'm releasing you. I've pointed you. I have a divine assignment. I have an appointment right there. And I have empowered you to fly. I'm releasing you to go and do that. You do have the skills. You do have the potential. I've got you covered. And if you encounter... Some winds that are contrary, just use my name. Isn't that good? It's so good. You're expandable. You've been growing and you've been growing. Mm. God sets us free to live out our best life. Free people set people free. And bless people. You got it. Hurting people hurt people. Mm. Freedom. You've been set free to love those who are unloved. You've been set free by the one who loves us all and died for us. Love never fails. Philippians 1.6 says this, Being confident of this very thing, that he which begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Look over at your neighbor and tell him he always finishes what he starts. 
Isn't that who he is? Huh? And on the sixth day, all the work was finished. And he looked at it and he said, that's good. And on the seventh day, he rested. He always finishes. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Anybody growing in the house today? Anybody gaining some ground today? You bet. Mm. So here's the one we like. Pastor Scott spoke this one. He quoted it to you. I want to rehearse it again in your ears. I can do all things, right? That Philippians 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Through Christ. But I want to start at verse 11. This is what he says. Not that I speak in respect of want. So Paul's not glorifying poverty. If Jesus come that we might have life and have it more abundantly, then don't glorify poverty. Hmm? But understand, no matter where you're at, you can be content. Let me tell you, contentment is an empowering thing. Well, I'm happy. You say, well, you just don't know what I've been through. I don't. You don't know what I've been through either. But I can tell you about your God that loves you. Whatever's getting in your way, whatever. I had a conversation with a young man yesterday. I spoke to him for an hour and 23 minutes yesterday morning. It was a long conversation on the phone. We had been in counseling together three years ago. And if you work the Word of God, the Word of God works. Every time. It works. And so, didn't get off the merry-go-round three years ago, just still going on. But what it is, is this merry-go-round spirals down. It keeps spiraling down. And we're having the same conversation we had three years ago, only the situation's worse. Anybody know that story? Yeah. Yeah. It's true. If you do what God tells you to do, everybody say if. if. Listen to me. There is no if on God's side. The if is on our side. Always. Always. His promises are yes and amen. He's already decided what he thinks about you. He loves you. And if you'll step in alignment with that, it'll be a whole lot easier to realize it. But the catalyst of change so often is when I hurt bad enough, I'll do whatever it takes to change. But the problem with change is it comes in two forms, good and bad. You have to be very intentional about changing for the good and getting yourself in alignment and letting God empower you because he does have a plan for your life and you have potential. The next catalyst for change is when you learn enough to know how to change. You got to learn. Let the word of God teach you. Let the spirit of God lead you, teach you, show you, guide you. And then the third catalyst for change is when you receive enough to be able to change. Sometimes you need to go like the man with the little boy to Jesus and say, I believe, but help my unbelief. And you go to someone that can, you can receive from what you can't get on your own. And people can help you up. People who are good people love to help people up and to empower others. They are encouragers. Not that I, that I speak in respect of want. This is Philippians 4.11. We're done here. Verses 12 and 13. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Everybody say content. Content's a powerful thing. If all you do is complain about what you don't have, you will never be happy. But if you will learn to be content with Christ, you already have it all. You say, well, that sounds like something a preacher would say. That sounds like something the Word of God says. Listen to what he said, verse 12. I know how both to be abased. I know how to live without. And I know how to abound. 
Failure can absolutely take you to the bottom, but I know a lot of people that can't handle success. Hmm? Been so successful and climbed the ladder of success to the very top, only to find that it was leaning on the wrong building. Hmm? That's why when Jesus said, it's hard for a rich man to go to heaven, it wasn't because of the riches. It had to do with the position of his heart. Huh? If God was against wealth, how could he say, I know that I have the plans for you. There are plans to prosper you. Right? And that can be taken to an extreme either way. Some of the greediest people and some of the most generous people I know are extremely wealthy. Some of them are extremely greedy. Some of them are extremely... It has nothing to do with the value of what they own or don't own. It has to do with how they position their heart in relation. You can't serve God and money. But then on the flip side of that, some of the greediest and some of the most giving people are some of the poorest people I've ever met. It doesn't have to do with what they don't have. It has to do with how they position their heart. Anybody remember a story in the Bible about that widow's might? And she gave more than all of them. But it was just a penny. No, it was the position of her heart. Huh? So you can be greedy or you can be giving on either end of the spectrum or you can walk where God's called you to walk and just be empowered and be an encourager and an empower not on the far wealthy side not on the far poor side I've learned to be content wherever I am a lot of people have never learned that a lot of people just push it back at me when I talk about it. Push back all you want. I know where I've been. I know where I've walked. I know how I was born. <laughs> Our house was 12 feet by 16 feet. I haven't torn it down because I don't ever want to forget where we come from. It's still a little old shack right behind our little house right now. My heart is content because of whose I am, not what I have. Amen. Anybody say amen. amen? That's true. Stan, we're done. I know both how to be abased and how to abound. Listen to this. Everywhere, I know this everywhere, no matter where I'm at. And in all things, I am instructed. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Then he says, I can. Everybody say, I can. Okay. Do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Do you believe that? The strengthener is in the house. The empower is in the house. And I don't know what your battle is. I don't know what your trial. I don't know what the valley is, the mountain is, the giant. Or maybe you're on the top of success and, and life is really rolling for you. I, I don't know. But God does. And so as we pray, here's what the Lord instructed me to minister to today, to pray toward. For those that are weak, you're just in a spot where you feel like all the reinforcements are being battered down. Just weak in the faith. Abraham talked about not being weak in faith, but being strong in faith. And then for some, just the insecurities. I think all of us to some degree battle with insecurities but our confidence our confidence is in him remember what we just read Philippians 1 and 6 I'm confident in this one thing that he who began a good work I'm confident in this so open your heart trust his word let your faith grow let it operate by love. Don't be afraid to love. You're free. In Jesus' name. So we speak to weakness. We speak to insecurity. In Jesus' name. Strengthen those that are weak today, Lord. Those that are watching. Online, Lord God, or television station Lord God wherever 
strengthen them. We all feel weak sometimes. Help us in those weak points, Lord God, to remember what Paul said, that when I'm weak, I'm strong. It's because he learned how to depend on you and to be content wherever he was. We go through times and periods where we're just weak, but you empower us. You do what we cannot do for ourselves. So we call upon your name. If you're here today and you feel weak, you receive that in Jesus' name. If you're dealing with insecurity, I'm not good enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. Listen, you're good enough for the, for the divine, holy God, the creator of all, to live in you. Then I think you're probably good enough. If you're good enough for him to dwell in you, greater is he that is in you. Don't be afraid. Don't let insecurity rob you another day. You can give of yourself. And that will empower someone. You can give your testimony. And it will encourage. I pray, Lord God, for each one of us here. You have called us to be encouragers. All of us to be encouragers. So I speak that word, Lord God, for these encouragers to to fly like the arrow. As we're released from this sanctuary this morning, Lord God, today, fly like the arrows, Lord God, to go and to encourage others with the same encouragement we've been given. To empower others with that which you have empowered us. That there is a transfer of that power from your mighty arms into our lives and that we can catch the wind of your spirit and be filled and continually be being filled with your spirit thank you Jesus heads bowed anybody going through that weak spot tough spot see your hand yeah anybody else yeah yeah Weak spot, yeah, several, bunch. Okay, listen, the word is for you today. You're not in it by yourself. There's a word for you here today. God met you here today. You're not here by accident. You receive that. Say, God, strengthen me. Strengthen me, Lord. No matter what area in your life it is. Anybody battling insecurity? Just insecurity. Yeah, anybody else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. See, we're secure. Our strength is in Him, not in you. Have faith in God. Nothing impossible with Him. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I'm leaving fear. I'm leaving insecurity. I'm leaving weakness here today, Lord. And I'm going to walk out in the power of your word, the power of faith, the power of love. I'm walking out in the power of freedom and somebody else is going to get free because I'm free. I'm going to encourage them and empower them. I'm going to give that away. Thank you, Lord. Release us now, Lord, to fly by the power of your Spirit and empower someone else to encourage them, to strengthen them. We give you praise and we thank you. We know this is real. Thank you for restoration. Thank you for empowerment. Thank you for abundant life. give it away because there's plenty more in your house Father abundance thank you Lord we ask these things in Jesus name and everybody agreed said amen look over at your neighbor and tell him oh you have been working out Uh you have been I can see it come on give him the flex right here yeah looking buff 
Looking good.